Today, we're going to be comparing a bunch of different types and varieties of Socket 370 motherboards and then establishing which ones are best. Let's get started. To start things off, let's have a look at what I would consider to be one of the worst variants of Socket 370 motherboards, ones that only support Celeron Mendocino CPUs, or that are limited to a 66 MHz frontside bus. This limitation is normally because of the 440LX or VIA equivalent chipset these motherboards use. These are budget boards, steer clear of them, they do not work well, and don't support any Pentium 3s which defeats the purpose of having a Socket 370 motherboard. So how do you ID one of these rubbish boards? Well, it's simple. First of all, the 440LX chipset doesn't use a heatsink, so if there's no chipset heatsink and it's an Intel chipset, then you probably are dealing with a 440LX one. A similar story is with VIA chipsets too. Also, you can try googling your motherboard model number. That'll tell you a lot. Another really good budget option is to get a 440BX motherboard, a slot 1 one, and then to use something like a Slocket. You do need a good slot 1 motherboard, like an ASUS P3B-F, shown here. With a Slocket, you are most of the time limited to a 100MHz frontside bus, so you just need to find a slower PM3 CPU. You can actually go to a 133MHz frontside bus CPU, but you need a motherboard that has good overclocking support, and just bear in mind you are putting stress on the BX chipset, so the reliability of this is unknown. This is a good solution however, if you only want a 100MHz frontside bus Pentium 3, and I've used slockets in dozens of systems, and they've worked flawlessly. Overall, this is a great solution. But you just need to be wary of what chipset is in the slot 1 motherboard and what slocket you use. Ideally get a slocket with a lot of jumpers on it. They're generally the better ones. Now we get to what I would consider to be a real socket 370 motherboard. One that supports copper mine CPUs and has native 133 MHz frontside bus support. These boards of this generation commonly use VIA chipsets though you can get higher end Intel ones. The VIA chipsets are fine though, they run great and they're fast, that's all you can want. The best way to ID these boards is to look for VIA logos on them and also see if they're socket 370 and include common features like AGP. If it's got that then most likely you'll have a VIA socket 370 board on your hands. These things are super good, they just work and that's all they need to do. Native 133 MHz frontside bus support too, which is important if you want to run higher end Pentium 3s. Speaking of which, these VIA boards can handle up to around a 1 GHz Pentium 3, which is more than fast enough. Overall, I can highly recommend these boards, and don't hesitate to get one if it comes up for the right price. Now we get into the high end spectrum of things. Namely, motherboards using the Intel 815 chipset. These motherboards were generally manufactured post-2000 and were quite high-end since they were at the end of Socket 370's lifespan. Not only does the Intel 815 chipset have native support for 133MHz frontside bus CPUs, but it also has support for two Aladdin CPUs. Now, Tualatin support can be pretty hit and miss. Some motherboards will support Tualatin CPUs, some won't. This specific motherboard, the Aopen AX3S, does not. The best way to determine if you have an Intel 815 board on your hands is to first of all check and see if the BIOS chip is really small. If it's really small, then it's a later BIOS, so it will probably be an 815 board. Also, have a look at the general structure of the board. You can tell a lot from that generally. And also, check the chipset if it's an Intel one. If it's an Intel one and everything else applies, then you'll most likely have an Intel 815 board on your hands.
These motherboards are really fast and I can highly recommend them over something like a Via board if you can find them for the right price. That being said, I can highly recommend these boards and yeah, they get a seal of approval. Now we move on to motherboards that natively support to Aladdin CPUs or ones with the Intel 815 EPT chipset. These motherboards are the best of the best. They will support all the way up to a 1.4 GHz Pentium 3. On Gigabyte motherboards of this generation, like the Gigabyte GA60 XT shown here, the socket is blue. Whenever you see a blue socket 370, it means that it's a universal socket. So it'll basically support any CPU that fits in it. These really high-end Socket 370 motherboards are really great and they're just the best, to simply put it. Some of the key factors in determining whether you have a Tualatin motherboard on your hands is first of all whether or not it has a blue socket. It was only Gigabyte that did this, but still, a lot of Gigabyte motherboards were Tualatin ones, so it's worth noting. Also, if it has an Intel chipset and other than that, your best bet is really just to Google the motherboard model number. Not a lot can be told on whether a motherboard will support a Tualatin CPU or not, just from looking at the board. Well, that's about it for this video. Hopefully I've helped you understand what are the good and bad Socket 370 motherboards. Anyway, that's about it from me and I'll see you next time.